everyone, it's Mindy from My Creative Scoop and I'm back with a, another Copic tutorial for my favorite things. This month I'm going to be using this stamp set called Cute Chemists and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about depth perception when we're coloring. So let's get started. Okay, so I've stamped all my images and I've stamped them in a particular way because I, the way that I want this scene. This flask right here is a lot larger than the one that he there that he's holding so I want that to appear like it's in front of us so I when I stamped him I put him back a little bit more I put a piece of scratch paper right in front of him because we're gonna create a table so it looks like this flask is sitting on on top of the table and it's having this chemical reaction in the background and he's like uh oh so that's how we are going to color it so that's how I set up my images when I stamp them so anytime you have a stamp set that has an image in the front like that's a, that could appear a little bit farther away with the same type of images that are just a little bit bigger this is such a great way that you can achieve that that depth perception with um, you know making something appear closer you could do the same thing with trees or there's a gazillion different stamp sets that you can do this with so this is always just a really fun way to create different scenes so that way your cards come out a little bit different each time Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is color the skin tones. So I'm gonna make him have a little bit of rosy cheek. So I'm gonna start with my R32 and R30. And I want you to just to kind of forget that he has glasses on. So just directly underneath his eyes, we're going to make these little round dots for some rosy cheeks. And then we're gonna take the R30 and I'm just gonna go directly over that R32, pulling out that color a little bit. And now we're gonna go ahead and start with the skin tones. So I'm using E13, E11, E00, and E000. And I'm gonna start with my E13. And I'm gonna go directly underneath where the hair is falling onto his face. Since the hair is falling onto his face, it's going to cast a shadow onto his forehead. So. Also in the inside of the ears. And then you're just gonna continue tracing all underneath the little strands of hair. And I'm also going to come down the sides of the cheeks just a little bit. And now I'm gonna take my E11 and we're just gonna bring that color out a little bit more. So I'm gonna pull that color, the E13 out with my E11. And I'm gonna come down the side of the face a little bit more so that way it, it, uh, it starts to fade going down. So now I'm gonna take my E00 and do the same thing. I'm just gonna come in a little bit more. And now with my E triple zero, same thing, but this time we're gonna go ahead and fill in the rest of the face. Okay, so now we're gonna repeat that. Anytime I color something, I always like to go back, especially if you have a large area, which his face is a larger area. In order, sometimes your images can look a little bit blotchy if you're coloring, and uh, and it's because you need a little bit more ink down. So I'm gonna go ahead and start, and we're gonna just repeat that whole process again. So with your E13, go back into the shadowed areas. And now I'm gonna take my E11 and we're gonna do the same thing, just pulling that color out a little bit more. And then again with our E00.
and again with the triple zero. Make sure you get all those the ears fully filled in. Now if you have still a harsh line somewhere where you didn't get it blended out, I usually go back with one of my middle colors. So I'll either go back with my E11 depending on how dark I went, but in this case I'm going to go back with my E00. And I'm just going to give a heavy flick, softening up that harsh line between the two colors, or the four colors I guess you could say. So I'm just really putting my marker down and giving a heavy flick. That way it just, it softens it all up. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and color just a little bit of his hands before we get the next color combination out. So get out your E13, and right where he's gripping, right at the tips of the fingers, I'm just gonna add a little bit of color, such a small little area. And now I'm gonna skip. I don't wanna go E11 because I want there to be a little bit of a contrast, so I'm gonna go straight with my E00, and then I'm just gonna fill it in. And since this isn't a large area, we don't have to go back. You, you could go back and add a little bit more of a darker shadow, but I think it matches the face really good, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it alone. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna color is his coat. We're gonna have him have a white science man coat. So you're gonna get out your N3, N5, N1, and N0. I'm gonna start with my N3. And we're just gonna give a little shadow behind the collar where it's folding out. So I'm just gonna trace along those lines, come all the way down the side. And then also right in the back of here, because his face, his head, is casting a shadow onto this top part of his collar. And then where he's holding the flask, that's going to go ahead and cast a shadow onto his coat. So we're just going to give it a little bit of a shadow at the top and on the bottom. And all underneath his arm over here, also a shadow. So now I'm going to take my N1 and we're going to blend this out. Now the, tr the trick to coloring something white is leaving a white space. So we're just adding enough color to blur out that harsh line between each of the colors that we're laying down. And we'll really flick that going out with our N0 in just a second. But you want to make sure you're leaving a white space. So now with my N0, I'm going to give that heavy flick, and I've left that whole top part white. I didn't color any of it in. The side's a little bit trickier since they, there's a lot of shadows going on. And now I'm going to take my N5 and I'm going to add just a little bit of color in the darkest point of the shadow, all I'm going to do is literally trace the outline of the image. And that's gonna give it a little, I call it a make it pop. So right back here, where I want that shadow to really stand out, I'm just gonna give it a little trace just along the outline, just to make it stand out that much more. So just a tiny bit, and you could really see just adding that little bit of color really makes the, the collar look like it's going back and wrapped around his neck. So the same thing in he, uh, right behind where it's folding out. And right over here. And all underneath here. So we are gonna soften that up a little bit, but I'm not, since I don't want to add that much color, we're gonna skip between colors. If we were to go back now and go N3, N1, N0, we're adding a lot more color down and we're really risking the, the chance of, of filling in more of that white coat that we want to appear white and it's just gonna look gray. So I'm gonna skip my N1 and go straight to, or um, we did N5, so I'm gonna skip my N3 and I'm gonna go straight to my N1 and I'm just gonna 
soften this up a little bit by doing that heavy flick going down and softening up that harsh line of that N5. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and color his shirt. And for that, I'm going to be using B97, B95, B93, and B91. So we're gonna start with our B97, and it's gonna be darkest right on the inside part of his shirt closest to the jacket because we want the, ja the, the jacket to look like it's coming out a little bit above the shirt so it would be casting a shadow onto his shirt. So I'm just gonna trace those going down. And now with my B95, I'm just gonna come right down along the side of that B97. I'm gonna go over it a couple of times so that way it kind of erases that, that line blending the colors together. Now we're gonna take the B93 and do the exact same thing. So now I have just that little strip of, of white left so we're gonna fill it in with our B91. And now let's go ahead and deepen that shadow a little bit more. Let's go take back that N5 and just go right along where we added that B97 just to define that shadow a little bit more. And now we're gonna take the B97 and go directly over that B95. We don't want it to be gray, we want it to be a darker version of the blue. So now I'm gonna take my B95, and we're just gonna repeat that whole blue color combination. And now my B93. And then again with my B91. I'm gonna go ahead and take my B91 and just fill in the collar. That way it appears just a little lighter. Now his pants, we're not gonna be, at, we're, we're gonna do the pants in just a second. We're gonna go ahead and create the table. But before we do that, let's go ahead and finish his hair. So I'm gonna make his hair black. So we're gonna need N9, N7, and N5, and N3. We're gonna start with our N9. And his hair is gonna be darkest at the base of his head. So right at the root of where the hair is coming out. So I like to use, when I, when I color hair, I like to create the hair texture. So I don't really like to blend out the color too much. So I'm just gonna start making little flicks. So that way I'm creating those lines, those hair strands. So I'm gonna do the same thing for all of these little sections of his hair. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take that N7, and we're gonna do the same thing, just making it really streaky, still leaving some white areas. We want those lines to be in between one another. We wanna see all those different sh colors of streaks because the lighter we go, those are gonna create natural highlights and really give us that hair texture. And now I'm gonna go ahead and skip my N5 for now. We're gonna take the N3, and I'm just gonna go directly over each of those little hair sections. Now, I'm not going over it to where I'm blending out the colors that we just added, but I am going over it enough so that there is no more white. Okay, 
So now we're gonna go back with our 90 set, 90, our N9. And again, we're gonna start back at that darkest point. And since we've lightened some of that with the, with that N3, that's what we're going back and just adding those, that little bit of shadows. And now we're gonna, I'm gonna skip N7 because I, it's still really gray, but I don't wanna add too much dark because then we're gonna lose that hair texture, all those lines that we created. So you're gonna take your N5 and very lightly, I'm gonna try to just make a couple of little streaky lines where there's a gray spot. So I'm not filling it in, I'm not coloring it in. I just wanna add some more texture. So I'm just gonna make a couple of little flicks of the N5. So his hair looks good. He's got some natural looking highlights in there. I'm gonna take my N3 really quick because this looks really, really white. And I'm just gonna give it an extra little coat there. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and create the table. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and create a wooden tabletop. And I'm using the W's because I wanted, to, I wanted it to be a little bit lighter. I didn't wanna use a, a brown, but I did wanna use a brown base. So since the W's are a warm gray, we're gonna get that same kind of vintage dark, um, lighter wood. So we're gonna start with our N3. And what we're gonna do, and you could use a ruler if you'd like, I just kind of eyeball it. But we wanna create a line all the way down all along the bottom of where we've left off from the stamped image where we put that um, scratch paper. So, and you, we're gonna, that's why we're making it wood. We're not making a smooth surface. So it doesn't have to be straight. We can go back and add lines. So I'm just going to trace directly underneath all the way to the edge of my paper. I'm gonna do the same thing over here, but I'm going to stop. I don't want to go into that flask until um, we color the image first. So now I'm going to go ahead and just bring that down. Okay, so now you can kind of see it a little bit better. You can see that he's behind something. This is in front of him. So it's a little, it makes a little bit more sense. Not just a you know, floating flask with half of him is chopped off. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take the W3 and we're just gonna make some lines to resemble wood. All right, so now let's go ahead and take that N1. We're gonna do the same thing. I like to go over what I just colored just because it softens it up and that way when I'm dragging this color out I'm pulling some of that and or the W3 out along with it so it blends and fades and it will look more like natural wood and then of course I go back through and add a couple of extra lines of the W1 And now with our W00, I'm going to go ahead and just lean my brush to its side so that way I can fill in everything. All right, so now let's get out that W5. We're going to make the lines a little bit darker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come off of the paper and then I'm gonna flick going in. Wherever my marker stops, that's where I'm gonna stop. I'm not gonna to try to continue the lines because you have a tendency to get a little shaky and it 
that's when you start to mess up because you're really, really focusing and trying to concentrate and then it just, it doesn't look as natural. So just come off the side of the paper and flick going in and wherever it stops, it stops. Now I, I went a little thicker, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make them a couple of them a little thinner. Now we're going to take our W3 and we're going to go ahead and just go directly over pulling some of that N5 or w, ugh, W5 out. And then we'll go again with W1. Just gonna go in areas and just kind of blend out if I went a little heavier, so that way the, the ink kind of fades it out and blurs it out for us. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my N5, or my W5 again, and I'm just going to add a little bit of a shadow. So I want the shadow to come this way, so I'm just going to still keep that same uh, texture in the wood and so I'm just gonna make a couple of little lines coming out and you want this darker color to be closest to the bottle and now I'm gonna do the exact same thing with my W3 and then my W1 so that way it, it looks like the, the shadow is on the wood, but it still keeps that wood texture. I'm gonna go back with my W5 just to go directly underneath. Then I'll blend it out with W3 a little. All right, there we have it. So now let's go ahead and we're gonna color his pants, so we're gonna get out the same color that we used for his hair. So the ends, we're, we're, since it's just such a small little area, we're just gonna use the N5, the N9, and the N7. So I'm gonna start with my N9, and right underneath his shirt and on the sides of his coat. And then I'm gonna take my N7, come in a little bit more, and then my N5. Just fill the rest in. I go back with my N5 just to give it a little bit better blend up at the top there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and color all of the little science flasks and we'll let me get the colors together. Okay, so I'm going to be using, for this one up here that's having the little explosion, we're gonna mix two colors together in that Flask. So let's get out the BV04, BV02, BV00, and BV000. And then we're also going to be using the same colors that I used for his cheeks, so the R30 and R32. So we're going to start with that BV04. And I'm going to come down along the edges here on both sides because I want it to look like it's mixing together. So this color is going to be all along the bottom, and then the other one's going to be coming in towards the top. Now I'm gonna take my BVO2 and just push that color out a little. And then the BV00. Now let's go ahead and take that R32 and notice I didn't go sh all the way straight. I made it kind of, you know, not at a straight line so that way it looks like it's mixing slowly. 
So I'm going to pull some of this R32 all the way down. Now I'm going to take my R30 and let's go ahead and fill in the rest of that white area. Now let's go back with our BV triple zero. And let's go back with our BV zero zero. And then the BV02. And let's go back with our R32. And then the R30 again. You're going to go back and forth between the colors until you're happy with your blend. You might not be using the exact colors that I'm using, so depending on what you're using, you might have to go back and forth a couple of times. So now I'm going to take my BV04 and then my BV02 again. And then let's take that BV04 and right at the bottom of each of these little bubbles, let's make a little, almost like a little U. And then let's go ahead and take that R32 and fill it in, kind of mixing in that BV04 so go over it a couple of times so that way it looks like the bubbles are mixing together and all chemical reaction and all that good stuff. So I'm going to go back with my BV02 and give it a little bit more of that color. And then again up with my BV04 just to darken underneath that bubble. That's what's going to make it stand out. Okay. So now let's go ahead and give a little bit of color to the glass. So I'm going to use a BG000 and B00. I'm going to start with my B00 and just outline around on the sides. And then I'm going to take my BG000 and do a heavy flick. That way I still have that little bit of white so it looks see-through. And you know what, since we have those colors out, let's go ahead and do that for these ones as well. So take your B00. And give a trace along the clear part of the glass. And then with the BG000, just give a flick to soften up that B00, but try to leave a little bit of white. Okay, so now let's go ahead and finish coloring in each of the colors over there. So I'm going to use green for this one, and then we're going to go ahead and do a pink for this one. So it looks like he hasn't poured them yet. So let's start with green. So I'm going to use G24, and all along the bottom, we're going to go ahead and trace, and then we'll take the G21. And then my G20. And then let's go back with our G24 just to give that shadow back. Okay, so you know what? I'm actually, let's color this one pink, that pink color, since we've gotten so dark with, with um, this one up here with the BV color. So let's take the R32 and 
just trace along the bottom. And then let's take that R30. And now let's go back with that R32 just to give that shadow and that pink color a little bit darker. And then one more time with that R30. And then we'll take the R32 and just fill in those little bubbles. And then we'll do the same thing with the bubbles over here for the green one. Just take your G24 and fill those in. And we're gonna add some details with a white gel pen in just a few minutes but let's go ahead and color this little poof of smoke. So let's use our N, so N1, N0, N3, and a little bit of N5. And we're actually, let's go ahead and add a little bit of that BV000 and a little bit of R30. We'll add those in there somehow. So let's take that N3 and right where each of these little lines are creating that those that puffy look, we're just gonna pull the color down a little bit more. I'm actually gonna go, so along these bottom ones down here, we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit more of a shadow. So now let's take our N1 and we're just gonna pull those lines in. Now let's go ahead and take our N5 and just add a little bit of a deeper shadow on some of these along the bottom. And we'll go a little bit up here too. And now let's go ahead and skip the N3, go to N1, and go back and just soften up those lines a little bit more of the N5. And let's take that BV000 and I'm just gonna flick coming up this center. So that way it has a little bit of that purple tone. And then we'll go ahead and do the same thing with that R30. Come up along that side. So it just makes it look like having a little bit of an explosion in some of those, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Chemicals are up in the smoke. So now let's take that N0 and we'll soften it up. Kind of camouflages a, a little bit more. And there you have it. So I hope you enjoyed coloring this scene with me. Super fun, a lot of fun techniques and you know different ways that you can color with doing that whole depth perception. I will see you again next month. Have a great day.